I'm going to show you how to protect your photos when you have a hard drive crash and that crash is coming. My name is Tim Shields and I'm the founder of Photography Academy. Let me tell you a potential hard drive horror story that happened to me. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I came into the studio and I looked at my email and there was an email from my hard drive. I'll get into that in a minute. And my hard drive told me, Tim, red alert, we're failing on you right now. You got to do something about this or you're going to lose everything. So I freaked out, but the end of this story is that I was able to buy a new hard drive, get it delivered and install it. And I didn't lose anything, but it was a big wake up call for me because even though I had redundancy here in the studio, like what I mean by that is that my photos were saved in more than one place. I still was at risk of losing my photos. So I get asked a lot, what type of system is best to save photos and protect yourself as a photographer so that you won't lose your photos the day that your hard drive crashes? Because remember this one point, it is not a question of if your hard drive will crash. It is a question of when it will crash. Hard drives are like light bulbs, light bulbs. They have a lifespan and they will crash. So this is the setup that I use. I have my computer and coming out of my computer, I have an external hard drive and I'm just going to put HDD on this, which stands for hard disk drive. And so when I am loading uh, photos from my camera into my computer, I will save all of my photos here on the external hard drive. Now, why is it that I do that? There's a really important reason why you should save all of your photos over here on your hard drive instead of saving them here inside your computer. And it's all about your computer's speed. So your computer has at least one hard drive in it and your computer relies on that hard drive to operate itself, like to run Windows or run Safari. And when your hard drive starts to get full, your computer slows down. So if you've ever been using Lightroom or Photoshop and you've noticed that your performance is very, very slow, well, chances are the hard drive on your computer is getting very full and it's slowing your computer down. So the right way to do this is to get your photos over onto an external hard drive. Then from there, I have the redundancy. I have a backup because what if there is a theft here in the studio and we lose the equipment or there's a fire or a flood or whatever lightning strike world war three. So from here, I also have, you guessed it, the cloud and I have all of my photos getting backed up into the cloud as soon as I load them here. So I can plug my camera into my computer, straight over to here the photos go and then straight up into the cloud. Now, what do I use for the cloud? There are so many different options here. I actually use Dropbox for this. I've priced it out and I found that it's very competitive. Uh, there are uh, services such as Carbonite that you can use. I have not had a great experience with them. Like one of the downsides of that type of a cloud based backup is that they don't allow you uh, in the event of an emergency and you need to get access to all of your photos, they don't allow you to do it all in one fell swoop, like in, in one movement. They allow you maybe 30 gigabytes at a time and it would take you a month to get all of your photos back onto your computer. So I went with Dropbox. I pay for that service and it's been great for me. There are other services such as Synology that when you buy a Synology hard drive, it comes with one year free of cloud backup and maybe you want to try that. But this setup here using Dropbox has been absolutely great for me. Now, let me just show you what I mean by an external hard drive. So here's an external hard drive. What is really, really important for you to know is that this is not actually one hard drive. There are numerous other hard drives inside this thing. So what do I mean by that? Well, this is the actual hard drive right here. So this is an HDD hard drive stands for hard disk drive. And inside that box I just showed you, there are probably three or even four of these things inside and they all, they're all wired together. They all work together as, as one team. Think of it like uh, uh, a rowing, a paddle canoe, like for competitive 
boating and uh, the whole team is paddling together to get to one direction and that's what it's like four of these together five of them six of them sometimes depending on the size so let's just flip over here and i just want to talk about the different types of setups that come inside this type of a hard drive and it's really important you know this i'm just going to throw out a couple of technical terms stay with me on this because i'm going to make it all make sense so you have the one hard drive box like that now inside it you could have one hard drive two hard drives three hard drives so let's say that each of the individual hard drives in there are six terabytes so we've got six six and six and so you may think to yourself great this external hard drive is going to be six plus six plus six 18 terabytes so here's the one technical word that you need to know and it's this word here raid and raid stands for i wrote it down redundant array of independent disks the the big word here is redundancy and so when you buy this external hard drive, they're going to ask you, how do you want to set it up? And they have two things you really need to know. Do you want to set it up as RAID 0 or RAID 1? So here's the explanation. If your only interest is to have the most possible space, so 6, 6, and 6 uh, being 18. So with a RAID 0 setup, you're going to get... 18 terabytes but if your interest is safety and redundancy and protection from loss when your hard drives crash then you can go with a raid one setup and this is usually just sort of the flick of a switch when you're initially setting this thing up and with raid one your internal hard drives here are all mirrored so in this case with a raid one setup you would actually have only six terabytes but look at the redundancy here if one fails you still have two with all of your data stored on that and finally there's one more setup and this is the setup that i use and it is called raid five and this is kind of the happy medium so if you have three separate hard drives inside your hard drive box with raid five it will give you 12 terabytes of storage and so if one hard drive fails these other two will still have all of your data and this is exactly what happened to me so I got that email from my hard drive box one of them had failed and I was able to just pull out that hard drive put in a new one and all of my data was still stored here and then it copied it all over to this third one and because of that redundancy it saved the day so last little thing that I'll touch on is uh, whether you go with just a regular hard drive, like again, like this box, and you connect this into your computer with either USB or with uh, Thunderbolt. So this is where you would use it. Let's say you have your one computer at home and you have your USB and it's going into this hard drive box. For this setup right here, what I just showed you, absolutely perfect. I would be, if it was me, and, and it is me that I've done it, I would be looking for a RAID 5 setup so that I would have that redundancy and it would just plug into the one computer. But what if you have two computers at home? So way over here, you have this other computer and you want this computer to also get access to this hard drive. And in this case, you would want a hard drive called a NAS. A NAS is kind of like a little mini computer server. It looks exactly the same as the first little box that I showed you, but it allows two computers or more to be able to network into it and get all of your data. So last thing that I'll say about hard drives, um, hard drives like this one that are called HDDs, these have moving parts in it. It's kind of like an old fashioned record player. There's a disc in here. It's spinning really fast and uh, the electronics uh, actually have moving parts. These ones have a tendency, like they definitely fail. So the newer version, which costs a lot more, 
are what is called an SSD hard drive. So this little box right here, this thin little thing, it's actually one terabyte of storage. And this is great for when you're out traveling. And um, the only downside though is you pay a lot more for them. But the upside is there are no moving parts in them. They're completely solid state. So they last a long, long, long time. But at this point, when we're talking about terabytes and terabytes of data, you're still going to be using these HDD style hard drives for the time being just because of the price, the high price of the SSD. So in summary, think of your hard drives as a light bulb. They will fail on you. And so it's up to you to have some sort of a redundant setup. Let's just go back to page one here. And a setup just like this one here external hard drive plugged into your computer and then backed up into the cloud so that no matter what happens, you are going to have your photos. You know, um, in closing, think about how important your photos are to you. Like they are the diary of your life. They show all of those amazing times that you've had, all of that work that you put into your photography. You can't lose it. It, uh, it, would, be, it would be like having your house burned down if you lost all of your photos. So I am curious about one thing though, if you would like to let me know what has been your experience with saving photos, have you lost your photos? Have you had a hard drive crash? And what kind of a setup do you use? What's working for you? There are a hundred different ways that you can do it. This is the way that I do it and I, I like it. It's working for me, but I'd like to know how is it working for you and what do you use? What kind of equipment and what's your setup? So leave a comment down below and um, if you find value out of this video, please do click the subscribe button and the little bell beside it. It would mean a lot to me if you did. Thanks so much for watching and back up your photos.